Okay, so you just unboxed your new Wacom tablet. Congratulations. And now you're too lazy to read the manual. Well, this is where I'm going to help you out. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Wacom tablet and I'm going to give you the settings and preferences that I use. So, yo, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Revan here. And in this video, I'm going to show you set up and use uh, how to use your Wacom tablet for Photoshop. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right. The first thing you need to do is connect your Wacom tablet to your computer. Pretty obvious. All right. So the next step is you need to download the driver and you can find the driver over here. So you just go to this link. I will put it in the description below. Don't worry about it. You can also just Google it. Wacom driver. You will get there and you just type in the, the product that you have. So for example, PTH 660 and here you go. So once you done that, you just select one here, press enter and here you go. So depending on what kind of uh, system you're, you're running, uh, MacBook or Windows, you just download the driver and that's it. Pretty straightforward, just follow the steps. Cool. Once you've done that, you should be probably have something like that. Uh, when you open the Wacom settings, you will have something like this. Cool. So I will just run with you through the settings, uh, what I use and why I use it. That's in my opinion, the most important thing. So not that you just copy the things I do if you think, oh, that's good, but you need to understand what you're changing. So cool. Let's start with the grip pen because that's the most essential thing about this product. Um, okay, so you got a couple of settings. First of all, you got the tip feel, and pretty much that defines how hard or soft to press when using the pen. So when I go with my pen over here and I press, you you can see the bar over here. My preference is I put it a bit harder. So because I'm not as gentle, I just like to press a little bit harder to get the maximum. Cool. Don't worry, you won't break the pen or the tip. They're pretty resistant, and you got like a bunch of tips to. Uh, replace them with okay next we got a double click distance my advice uh, put it off it is it's, it's gonna mess up your work uh, when you use a mouse a double click is really easy you just stay on the same spot and you click and as you can see there's always a little bit of movement and distance um, it will get annoying when you're working so my advice just put it off cool then we got tilt sensitivity um, what is that it is when you tilt your pen in a certain angle that you will write. I f I, I'm not really sure if I'm going to pronounce it correctly, but calligraphy. I hope I got it right. But I don't use it, so I just leave it the way it is. But calligraphy, well, just Google it what it is. It's those, the, the, the fancy font, the fancy handwriting, which they used back in the days. But if you use that, you can, you can just... Uh, feel what's, what's working for you. Uh, I don't use it, so I don't use those settings. All right <clears throat> Now something That's gonna help you out and that's Two settings over here on your pen as you can see you got two buttons. You got the front one and the back one The front one is uh, by default on right click and the back one on double click What I always do uh, because I use it while using Photoshop InDesign Illustrator I change the back one to the undo function and how do you do that you just click on it you go to keyboard you go to keystroke and you just do command z or control z for windows and just name it there you go name it undo and press ok so now every time i click the back button it will uh, activate the function undo it will do the keystroke i just put in you can do whatever you want you can even do uh, control S for, or command S to save your project uh, because we have all been there that your product project just messes up errors and you have to start all over again. But as your, I would suggest to do this keystroke because it helps me out to speed up my workflow. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I really kind of catch the cold. So if I'm sounding a bit funny, that's why. All right, next one. Oh. Here we go. Where are you? Here you go. All right, next one. We got the eraser. Uh, it's a nice addition because it really gives you the feeling that you're holding a pencil and you can even flip it over to uh, activate the eraser tool. But in reality, you don't really use it. So 
yeah I, I don't have any preferences or settings for this I would just leave it the way it is if you use it uh, you can you can change to a little bit to I would suggest soft um, instead of firm as you can see then the pressure is yeah you would just erase it anyway all right um, another important thing is mapping what is mapping as you can see this is the tablet I'm using and these are my screens I'm using currently two screens I always use two screens the downside is that the left side of my tablet represents the left screen and my right side represents the right screen as you can see the resolution is kind of fuzzy so what I like to do um, in general is go to tablet area go to portion and change it to this by default let me just by default it is something where you go something like that uh, what I like to do is put it around here and why do I prefer that it's like your mouse uh, now this section to the top left of my my screen put it a little bit larger actually represents the two screens yeah like that compare it with the sensitivity of your mouse the, the speed where you move your mouse if it's really low you have to really move the mouse a lot to get from the top left to the bottom right uh, same with the tablet if I want if I want to go from the top left to the bottom right then I really have to move my arm around and by uh, decreasing the size of this little area it's just the top left so I can really just don't have to really move my arm a lot to get anywhere I want so that's my you got mode pen and mode mouse uh, the difference is for example if I click uh, to demonstrate I'll just put it back to normal here we go with pen it is where you click the pen on your tablet is where your mouse appears so if I would click over here my mouse is over here so let's just demonstrate my mouse is now on the top left over here if I would just lift my pen and move it somewhere uh, in another position the mouse just changes position instantly it's, as you can see it's now over here you didn't see the movement it just dropped or popped instantly here you go again with the mouse function it's like uh, just like the mouse you can just scroll it around uh, it's really annoying and I would just suggest it to leave it on pen no don't want that so let's go to portion put it back to a smaller area that's okay and here we go cool um, so now you got that area done all right um, what else do we got well, first we go to touch pretty much those are the, the things you want to do with your with your fingers the gestures you want to do same with the uh, when you have like a pad on your laptop or MacBook or whatever you want Up the upside is you can also just move your your finger around and it will just automatically changes as a mouse not when you click somewhere your mouse will appear there it'll just go anywhere you want all right so I don't really change those settings actually <laughs> I just leave it the way it is it's pretty pretty obvious pretty straightforward these are very uh, generic gestures which feel intuitive intuitive yeah I fucked that up but yeah same with the functions uh, this is actually uh, something I used to change a lot in the beginning uh, I did set them all to certain keystrokes but in reality I don't really use them so if you want to use them you can for example change one to save so for the sake of this tutorial we're gonna change this one the bottom from the top the third one to a keystroke and we're gonna do command s or control s and it's gonna be safe so now every time you press this certain uh, button uh, well in Photoshop or even in Microsoft Word or Pages or whatever it will just activate or do the function control command as to save your project so yeah now we're gonna go it's actually the same over here you can change all those settings but I don't really use them uh, I'm always using wired actually um, so that's it I don't really mess around a lot with all the other settings it's just I want to I want to uh, use the brush in Photoshop to draw to modify to uh, adjust my pictures and yeah 
All right, another really future, a really helpful feature which is going to help you is we're going to go back to mapping over here. And as you can see, when I'm in Photoshop, I don't want this area to represent my entire Photoshop screen. I want to have more control over what I'm doing. So we're going to change that. If you go to application, it says all. So the settings we just put in will apply to everything on your computer or a MacBook. So if you press on plus over here, you can add a program. So we're going to add Photoshop and we're going to press OK. And now you can uh, modify the, the settings of the tablet specifically for Photoshop, which we're going to do. So if we're going to go to mapping, we're going to first put in a full and screen area on monitor one. And as you can see, it only represents the left part of my, uh, the, the left screen on my entire tablet. So I got more feeling and control of what I'm doing. It's like slowing down the mouse speed, uh, but still I can go really fast if I just move my, if I lift my arm up. So yeah, that's gonna help you. I would suggest do this. And I think that's pretty much all we have done for the settings now, so yeah. And now, the moment everyone has been waiting for, it's time to get into Photoshop and show you the settings with the Wacom tablet to get the maximum out of your tablet when using Photoshop. All right, so we're in Photoshop now. And first of all, what you want to do is open the brush settings. And how you do that, we're gonna go to uh, window. We're gonna go to brush settings. And here you can get a lot of settings over here. First of all, press B to activate uh, the brush tool. And as you can see now, we can change some settings. Well, we're gonna get a new empty layer over here. We've got the brush settings, we've got the brush, here we've got the brush. And as you can see, if I press hard or soft, it doesn't matter, the line is all the same. It's like when you, now I'm using the mouse, it's same as the mouse. If I uh, change it to, if I put on shape dynamics and put control on pen pressure, now something fuzzy, fuzzy is gonna happen. If I press really soft, the line is really uh, slim. If I press harder, the line is gonna get a little bit thicker. So now you've uh, enabled the pen pressure control of your Wacom pen. So if I put the, wait one sec, let me just put my the brush size a bit higher. As you can see now, it's a difference if I press really soft or really hard. If I put this to zero, the minimum the diameter, you can see that the shape of my brush will change. If I put it to 100, it's the same. If I put it to zero, as you can see, I have a lot of control. If I press really hard, it's gonna get really thick. If I press really soft, it's gonna get really thin. So, yeah. And because we applied the back button to control C, I just pressed it a couple times and it's all gone. All right. I would suggest to put the minimum diameter to like 30 or 40 percent you still you, you will still have some feeling to change it from thin to thick but it, you won't have to really struggle to get the same line or uh it's gonna get really thin which if you want to you can put it down uh, put it down if you don't want to then down uh jitter just yeah pretty much leave it the way it is what is jitter if i put it high you can see you got all kinds of I don't know, it looks weird, so just put it off. Next one, we're gonna go to transfer. And what does transfer do? Shape dynamics changes the shape, so from thick to thin. Um, if you put this one on pen pressure control, as you can see, it fades in, fades out a little bit. So if I put it out, it's all the same opacity. If I put it on, you can see it goes from, it fades in, if you press harder, it, it's brighter. And if you press softer, it will fade out. So let's just put it to practice. I press really soft and then I press harder. Does it work? I'm not sure. Let me see. I don't want that. Minimum, nope. I think I'm gonna put shape dynamics off for a second. There you go. So as you can see, it's really soft. And as I start to press harder, the ink is going to get thicker as you can see so you really have a feeling like if you're using 
a pencil or a brush which you can yeah just change it up a little bit but the harder you press the more ink will come on your on your canvas as you can see that's the different that's the point of transfer with shape dynamics you can like combine them so when you press really soft you will get a thick uh transparent line if you press harder you will get a thick a line with more ink as you can see over here so those are the two main things which you want to enable if you want to brush depending on where you are in your artwork if you just want to sketch i would suggest uh, just use shape dynamics if you want to color your uh your painting in use transfer because now you can uh what's a, what's the word for it you can decide how much ink you want to use on a specific part you can make your own gradients and apply shadows and that kind of things all right so those are the two main things to activate when you want to use the Wacom tablet in Photoshop. So now I'm just going to press the back button a couple of times to get rid of everything. And now I'm going to give you some extra tips when you want to use the tablet in Photoshop. First of all, uh, well, the brush size we've already done. I'm going to give you some other tips. And that is some shortcuts to which will speed up your workflow. So if you want to change the brush size, what you do is you press control and option on a macbook and it's alt right click on uh, what's it called on windows and what happens you will get this circle over here and now you can without going to the settings you can change the brush size if you go up or down it will decide the hardness so now it's a really soft brush and now it's a really hard brush if you go from left to right you can defend this or uh, change the size of it so left is, is uh, smaller and right is bigger so you can really easily change the the size of your brush so let's say you want something like that and here you go and you want, oh, i want to if you want to have a thicker or a harder brush oh here you go so control option and click and drag on the on the macbook and alt right click and drag on a windows so another thing which you might want to use is zoom in zoom out normally you would use your mouse with a shortcut and now you can use um control space bar um do i got it right it's option space bar on mac so if i hold option space bar click and drag i will zoom in or out and it's alt no Control spacebar click and drag on windows that's it so option uh, spacebar click and drag on mac and control spacebar click and drag on windows if you just press spacebar and click and drag you can move around so with those two uh, key, uh, keys you can just move around whatever you want zoom in move around zoom out and go somewhere else all right cool so uh, one final thing I'm gonna explain to you the difference between opacity and flow uh, you should actually know this by now uh, because you use photoshop for the people who don't know this is gonna be uh, this is gonna obliterate your mind it's gonna be mind-blowing uh what is the difference between opacity versus flow all right so first opacity opacity pretty much means the maximum amount of ink you're going to put on or uh, color you're going to put on so let's say we're going to put it to 50 percent it's solid black the color we selected and it's going to be this is going to be the maximum it is going to be no matter no matter how hard i press or how many times i go over it this is the maximum amount of ink if i would pretty much go this to 100 and put it to let's say 90 percent i press really so hard right now and i just go over it and over it so if i press really hard you can see it's the same but when I go over it again and again, it gets darker and darker. So it multiplies, it, it layers up. With opacity, you have one layer, and that's a maximum of 50%. And with opacity, or, or just with opacity, and with flow, when you go for, for the maximum pressure, you will put on 20%. If I go over it again, I will put another 20%. If I go over it again, it's another, well, 90%. And so on, and so on and so on and with flow you do you do you don't have that so when you want to brush 
and you want to make like gradients and have like a, a really for example light red let's just let's do that so let's say we're gonna pick a, a red one and we want to make like a gradient so we're gonna increase the brush size a little bit make it a bit softer so somewhere over here now when I press harder and go over it again it gets darker and darker until I get like a final full red so you can see there's like a little bit of gradient with opacity that doesn't work because the maximum amount of ink without lifting up your pen was 50% so you have to lift up your pen so we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you if I put opacity back on let's say 50% and put my brush a bit of it smaller this is the maximum amount of ink i have to lift it up again and go over it to make it darker and do it again to make it even darker and while with opacity or with flow um, i don't have to do that i can just go over it again to make it darker so i hope that's clear um to close up this tutorial um i'll give you some advice uh, it will take some time to get completely used to the Wacom tablet, but you will have more control and finesse with your brushes. So I would suggest if you got the time to invest it, invest in it, do it. Uh, another upside is it's actually a more healthy position for your hand uh, in comparison with a mouse. I'm not sure it, what's the word in English is for it, but uh, ergonomic, I'm not really sure if I just fuck it up over here. But it's like the posture with your hand is a lot more smoother and friendly for your wrist when using a pen instead of using a mouse. Um, you are going to find some situations where the mouse is still a better option. Uh, for example, in hard editing uh, or when you yeah, going to apply just layers, not brushing or ju just layer on layer. A mouse will probably still be better, but in specific situations like brushing uh, sketching a Wacom tablet is you, it's so much better um, so yeah I hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions put them in the comment section below um, I try to read and apply to every question is asked by you guys um, like if you like the video uh, if you have any feedback for me just put it in the comment section below uh, subscribe to my channel help me grow and yeah thank you for watching cheers hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did be sure to leave a like if not refresh it give it another chance got questions just ask them in the comment section below and i will see you in the next video